Let's chat the Blues. Uh, they came oh so close last year, didn't they? Will 2021 be Leon McDonald's year in his third at the helm of the Blues team? Well, uh, the team turned a real corner last year and their team looks super mean this year. Let's have a little peek and see who's in and who's out. The key figures in the squad this season, Nepolo Lala, the big man he's heading north of the Bombays to pull on the blue strip. He'll be a big loss to the Waikato-based franchise. Uh, Dylan Hunt, it's a homecoming of sorts for the Auckland-born Highlander who boasted a 94% success rate with tackles in Super Rugby Aotearoa last year. Zahn Sullivan, now you're not be overly familiar with his name perhaps but you will be that's the big call as the fullback who can also play 10 he's tipped as a real prospect for the future it's a real opportunity for the exciting young back with Bowden Barrett now in Japan add to the missing persons list James Parsons retiring after 115 games for the Blues his concussion issues forcing time on his career hey what about Roger Roger Tuivasacek, sorry fans, you'll have to wait until next year for the Delhi M winner to pull on the blue strip and who knows, maybe even a black one one day. But how is the pressure on the Blues for another stellar season? Surely a lot of pressure for them to go one better this year, boys. Well, JK, you can pretty much start us off because you're shaking your head like uh, the there's, favourites. There's no pressure on us. Why is there no pressure? There's pressure on the Crusaders. There's no pressure on the Blues. The Blues are building. The thing I like about it, You've Mills, been building for how long? Uh, how long? How much, how much longer can you be building? How much longer? You haven't got time to build. No, no, no. Listen, we have been building for the last 25 years. So you're building years, to next year yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. No. So Bowden returns and Roger to of us. Who else have you bought? Bo we only had Bowden for five games last year, so look. The interesting thing about the Blues, when you live in Auckland like I do, beautiful Auckland, you realise that something special is being built, right? So Brownie comes up here and talks about culture, talks about getting things right, making sure you're in creative environment, and that is happening. I think Leon has done an amazing job, and we can feel it around the community. So I think that this is going to be a hard tournament to win. Are the Blues going to be in there at the end? I believe they are, because they are the leadership group's older, they've got a well-balanced side, and things are happening also off the field. Mills. They're not where they were two years ago, the fact because they were waiting and looking for a 10. And the performances they got last year, they got some consistency. And we've talked about that. But still, they've lost a significant amount of leadership when you take out not only Bowden Barrett, but James Parsons as well. Who steps up? Is it someone like Rico Ioane? I think so. I think Rico Ioane definitely steps up. He's been there for a, a number of years and he's really matured. A lot of questions were asked also, you know, when he stepped into that centre position. Gone through a bit of adversity, especially in the black jersey and, and, and number the 15. So... He really has to step up in terms of his voice. Um, you know, he, he's been in the environment and in, in Leon's environment for the last couple of years. So now's the time for him to really shine. And I like, I like the way he's gone about it too. All the other pieces of the puzzle are there though. But once again, JK, does it not come down to your key decision makers, guys like Otiri Black and Stephen Perifeta, Zan Sullivan, Finlay Christie at halfback. I mean, those guys are going to be the go uh, players who have to drive them around the park. Can they not just do what they did last year, but be better because they'll need to be? Yeah, look, and I think the most important thing about last year was Bowden spent a lot of time at fullback. So Tita was up there running it. Um, he will have to have a great season for the Blues to win. You need that at first five. But I think the leadership, like you said, they'll miss James. James has been an amazing player for them. And so as long as that leadership steps up, and they're complete around the football paddock, I think they'll be hard to beat. And also think their, their pack's gotten a lot, a lot better. You know, they're, they're prepared to work hard for each other. Guys are prepared to, you know, clean out rucks and get that quality of ball. So, you know, I'll tell you, Black & Co have been on the back of some really good, sturdy performances, like from, from the likes of the, their leader, Patrick Tupolotu. You know, look at their, look at their Lucy's. Man, there's, there's some good names here that they're going to miss out. And where they fit, and the likes of a Tom Robertson, who has been really, really inspirational for them. I look at this Blues outfit, and they are certainly an improved team, but now is the time for them to take that step up, if they're going to. This is their opportunity. They can only probably get better again next year, JK, but you can't wait any longer. Oh, this, to this tournament is too hard. I mean, you, you know, like... Look at the Chiefs last year. You've got to start fast. You've got to win a couple of early ones, especially the Blues. We talk about it, but it's any rugby team. If you start well, get some confidence, get a roll on, then it's all good. They looked really good in the preseason game on the weekend down in Cambridge. Uh, lucky and very fortunate they got the hit out. Crucial for them in terms of preparing for the season. They did have a standout performer last season, though, and Caleb Clark was nothing short but spectacular. And he then did it for the All Blacks as well. We asked him what's exciting him most about this year's campaign. Yeah, we're all really excited, eh? Um, 
Super Rugby is always a, a really fun time of the year, and so it's quite cool that round one is against um, the Hurricanes. Uh, which is one of my favourite teams to play against uh, just because there's so many boys in the Wellington teams that I'm really good friends with, um, knowing that it's Artie's 100th game as well. Hopefully I get picked to play, um, but um, sort of celebrating that occasion as well with them would be um, pretty special. But at the same time, I know all of us are, are really looking forward to put out a performance that we'll be proud of. Yeah, and we can't wait. The Hurricanes, a team with ticker, aren't they? Big ticker. And that perfectly encapsulates Adi Savia, their new skipper for the year. Uh, they finished third last year. Remember, they're the only team, though, that beat the Crusaders and the Blues. So a big notch on their belt. All right, so Adi, he's going to get to boss around his big brother this year. Julian the Bus Savia, he joins the Canes. He had a stand-up mighty team for Auckland. Hurricanes fans, they'll also be itching to see what 110 kg winger Salisi Rassi can do. His blistering pace surely will make up for the loss of Ben Lamb to France. They need some love in the backs. Uh, James Marshall's, uh, Marshall's retired after a niggly hip injury. And of course, TJ Perinara, he's on a sabbatical in in Japan. This team looks very strong and menacing up front, but perhaps a little fragile in the backs with some of those losses. Can to get your thoughts, team? Yeah, significant losses. The fact TJ Perinara is one of those, and it happened late last year, Mills. I look at this group and I thought they were not necessarily the overperformers, but the ones that surprised me the most. The fact that deep into the competition they were playing quality rugby putting themselves in position to win big games. Well, they adapted a lot faster, didn't they, than they needed to because they weren't playing uh, you know, too well in that first first couple of rounds. But TJ Perinata, he's going to be significant loss to them, particularly around the fact they've got some young backs. Um, you know, who's going to steer them around, you know, around, the, uh, around the park in terms of, you know, is it Garden Bashup or, you know, Simon Hickey's come, come back into it as well. So, uh, and then when you look, you know, outside of those guys, you know, fairly inexperienced side. Yeah, well, TJ Perinata used to go for the last 15 minutes to first five last year. Um, I think the biggest thing about last year for me was when there was Geordie Barrett and when there wasn't Geordie Barrett. I think there was a, I remember all three of us at the game down in the Chiefs where he came back from injury and he was unbelievable. The thing that concerns me the most about the Hurricanes would actually be uh, their bench and their depth. So I think uh, Julian coming back, I mean, imagine him. Let's hope that he marks Caleb. How would that be? Ouch. Yeah. Wouldn't want to be out there. But, you know, I think players like Geordie need to stay on the paddock. And, you know, a few of these young guys, you talk about the Blues first fives having to stand up, so do the, do the Hurricanes. No shortage of talent, though. Uh, you're still not convinced he's a fullback, but then you start looking at the likes of Nani Laomapi, who made a pretty much a statement last year in the way that he was playing, the pace they have on the outside channel, and Julian come back into the fold. He looked really good in the preseason, Mills. So I don't know if talent's an issue for them, but maybe that consistency of performance from week to week is going to be their challenge? Yeah, consistency and communication as well, you know, in terms of, you know, making sure everyone's on the same page. He's going to do this, you know, all day long in uh, Low Mapi. But also, you've got to be able to be able to have the guy that's outside him calling the shots in terms of where the space is, um, you know, using him as a decoy runner, for instance. And have they got the experience, the guys outside, to be able to call that? Yeah, I'm not too sure yet. And you're talking about on field leadership, and Adi Savi has been given that responsibility. But he's not an open side. Duplessy Karifi, who's been outstanding for Wellington and for the Hurricanes. What influence and best influence can Adi Savia have for them, JK? Well, just to do what he's doing on the screen. You know, I think at number eight, he's explosive. That effort that he puts in when he plays, I think he'll be a player that will um, lead by example. When he says something, people will listen, but he won't be a, that verbal, I don't think. He will need... Um, other players in the back line to step up and help him, like Nani. Nani's been around a long time now, Mills. He needs to step up into a leadership role and help him. So it'll be this whole leadership group that'll get him through. And sometimes it can be really difficult when you step into that captaincy role, you know, to, to define your role. You know, he, he loves being out wide and being a little, little bit more space. You know, now he's got the opportunity to say, well, do I lead from the front in terms of the physical battle? You know, getting a little bit closer and winning those contacts, particularly when we with ball in hand. So that's where he, we, we might see a little bit of confusion in terms of the way he wants to play this year. A combative way, that's the way he plays. Place, and that'll continue as someone who doesn't mind the scrap, Dane Coles. He's a bit old school, but he's hinted maybe that this could be his last season of Super Rugby. I'm not sure about that, but we asked him as well what it's like to be the elder statesman in the Hurricanes. I suppose I re represent like a, I still like challenge myself because I'm, I suppose, the older, uh, older age uh, to compete with these young fellas and. Um, I suppose, especially in my team, I can't probably speak for the other other teams, but just show what it means to be a Hurricane, um, carry on the legacy and just show that passion that I have for this team. And um, 
yeah, we're, we're get around the young fellas and just just be me. I, I reckon I'm not trying to be a guardian or anything. Uh, just trying to represent the Hurricanes the best way I can and um, make sure it means something to people on my team.